Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Studying with Brother Don. I'm Brother Don, and this is Bible Study Central. This is where it all happens. If there's anything that's going to happen with the Bible, it's, 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 it's here. Amen? A little humor there. Don't, don't, uh, don't get too carried away with that. But this is Bible Study Central right here. So glad to have you with me this afternoon. I was uh, going to talk about some news items from the past couple of weeks, but man, when I started going through my notes, if, if you've been keeping up with the news, there is just so much. And it's it's not just weather and and natural disasters and things like that. It, it's political and it's 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 upheavals, it's riots, it's it's governments. I mean, it, it just and I just I mean just now as I turned off the the Wi-Fi on my iPad. I just got a news flash that said something about the Capitol in Tennessee. Something is going on at the Capitol in Tennessee, some kind of riot or protest or something. So after I finish this study, I'm going to have to check into that and see what's going on there. So I just decided not to not to bother with the news today. Uh, I, I know it's been a while since I've done that, and it's just... I'm just not going to bother with it because it's, it's just such a mess right now. It's just an obvious sign of the times. And what I do want to do is Bible study because the Word of God never changes and the strength, the power, the glory of God is always the same. And we as His children, no matter what happens in this world, we have a firm foundation. We're like the guy in Matthew chapter 7 that built his house upon the rock. And when the storms and the rains came, that house stood strong. And we as children of God, that's where we are at. And it doesn't matter what happens in the news, what happens in this world. Even if the world implodes on itself, we have a firm foundation and we have a home in heaven. Amen. Woo, yes, sir. So we're just going to talk about some stuff right now. And this is a little bit off kilter, maybe, the way I'm going to present this. But but this is, it, it, it's true and it's exciting. When, uh, <clears throat> when I was a kid growing up, like most everybody else, Superman was my hero. I mean, man, Superman could do it all. He could fly. He, he was the strongest man. He could pick up. He could stop anything. He was faster than a speeding bullet, and bullets just bounced off of him. And on top of that, he had a girlfriend, Lois Lane. I mean, Superman had it all. But when I begin to grow up, when I begin to experience real life and, and became more of an adult, things begin to change. And Batman became my favorite superhero. No longer was it Superman, now it's Batman. And there's one simple reason that Batman became my superhero after I grew up. i give you a minute. You figure it out yet? Batman didn't have any superhuman powers. Not like Superman, not like any of the other superheroes. Batman didn't have any superhuman powers. He did all of his stuff by his intelligence and by his ingenuity. When he was surrounded by villains, he never lost his composure. You remember in the cartoons and then in the movies that's been around here lately, when he got into any kind of situation, that face, you know, all you saw was his mouth and his eyes. His expression never changed. He never lost control when he got into situations because he knew what he could do and he knew he had his weapons with him. And folks, that's the important right there. He knew what he could do and he knew he had his weapons with him. No superhuman power, just a man who knew what he could do, and that he had his weapons with him. He never loses control. He never lets circumstances around him control him. And to me, that is what a Christian should be like. 
That's what a true child of God should be like. Circumstances should not control us. What we see with our physical eyes, what we experience in the world around us, those things should not control us. We have the abiding within us of the greatest power in the universe, the presence of God Almighty in the person of his Holy Spirit. And folks, even Superman can't beat God. God created Superman if Superman were real. Anything in this creation, God created it. So there's nothing. There's no trial. There's no tribulation. There's no demon from hell nor Satan himself that we can face in this life that God can't handle or that he hasn't already dealt with in Jesus Christ on the cross. Amen. We've got it all. And like Batman, our greatest weapon is knowing who we are and what not we can do, but what God can do. And then we have the promise from Christ that he has given us peace to keep us secure and safe at all times and in all circumstances. Remember I said that one of the things about Batman is that expression never changes. He just always, he just, it don't matter what happens, that expression never changes. We as Christians, we should be the same way. No matter what circumstance we find ourselves in, we should never change. The peace of God should keep us. Jesus said in John chapter 14 and verse 27, he said, peace I leave with you and my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give. Do not let your heart be troubled nor let it be fearful. You see, the word of Jesus to you and me today is don't be afraid and don't be troubled because the peace that he gives us, his abiding presence in us is not like the things of the world. The world gives you happiness. The world gives you peace for a moment and then it takes it away. The world gives you wealth. The world gives you anything that you think you need and then it takes it away. It can be gone in a minute. But with the Lord Jesus Christ, his peace abides with us forever, and that's because his presence stays with us forever. The Lord never leaves us. Paul said something like this in Philippians chapter 4, beginning in verse 4. He said, rejoice in the Lord always, and again I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men the Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to the Lord. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. He has given us a peace that will guard our hearts it will guard our minds so much so that sometime we will be in situations, we'll not lose our cool, we'll handle the problem, God will work and, and cause things to, to work out for our good according to his purpose, and people will look at us in amazement because no way on earth should we have survived that situation. No way on earth should we have come through that situation with the peace and with the presence of God, the joy of the Lord Jesus Christ that we should have. They'll just be amazed at what God has done through us. That is the power and the presence of God that Paul is writing to us about. That is the same promise and presence that carried Paul through his life. And back to my worldly example, Batman, he knew no matter how many villains faced him, he had all of his weapons, he had all of his abilities, all of his ingenuity, never lost his cool, he just faced it. Folks, that's the picture of a child of God resting in the presence and the peace of Jesus Christ. When everyone else is in a panic, 
when everyone else is scared to death, not knowing what to do, the child of God should be rejoicing in his Lord and Savior and carrying everything to God in prayer. The thing that Paul, or the thing that kept Paul stayed on Christ Jesus and not on his circumstances, the thing that gave Paul the confidence that he could be an overcomer like Jesus Christ promised was that he knew that Christ would honor his word. He knew that Jesus Christ would honor the promises that he has given us. Listen to what Paul says in Romans chapter 16, beginning in verse 25. Paul says, Now to him who is able to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery which he has kept secret from long ages past, but now is manifested and by the scripture of the prophets, according to the commandment of eternal life, has been made known to all nations leading to obedience in faith. In those two verses, if you paid attention when you read that and, and maybe marked some things, underlined some things, in those two verses, Paul makes reference to the word of God five times in two verses. He starts out by saying that God is able to establish you, to keep you. Notice what he says in verse 25. Now to him who is able to establish you. So he starts out making his point. He says, I'm talking about the God that will establish you, that will keep you, that will be that firm foundation that you'll never have to worry about it cracking, it falling. No earthquake can break this foundation. No tornado can sweep away anything that is built on this foundation saying God is able to establish you, to keep you safe. And then five times he uses words that refer to the word of God. Five times. Do you think there's a point there? Paul's wanting us to grasp something. It's the word of God. And Paul knew that God would keep his promise. Listen to what he says further about the promises of God. Second Corinthians chapter 1, beginning in verse 20. And he says, For as many as are the promises of God in him, Jesus Christ, they are yes. Therefore also through him is our amen to the glory of God through us. Now he who establishes us with you in Christ and anointed us in God, who also sealed us and gave us the Spirit in our hearts as a pledge. What a promise. If he told me I could have Batman, Superman, and all the armies of the United States of America at my command, I would rather have for as many as are the promises of God in him, they are yes. God will honor his word. God will keep his word. In Romans chapter 8, Paul says this as you begin in the lower verses there, beginning in about verse 30, 31 on down. It's of the beautiful passage. What can separate us from the love of God? Can, you know, depth or height or any created thing. And he says that he, that if he gave his only begotten son, how will he not with him give us all things? You see, because Paul knew Christ was able and would keep his word, Paul could say, I know. I know. Not that I hope, not that I believe, but I know. That's what kept him in all of his troubles, all of his tribulations, and all the times when it seems that God is not hearing our prayers, that we are abandoned. It's knowing that God Almighty will keep his word. Every promise he has ever breathed, every promise he has ever written on the pages of sacred word, God will keep.
Paul said this in 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 12. He says, for this reason I suffer these things, but I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and I am convinced that he is able to guard which I have entrusted to him until that day. That was my daddy's favorite verse. For I know whom I have believed. Doesn't matter what happens. Doesn't matter which direction this world goes and what happens in the news, even though from reading scripture, we know which direction the world's gonna go. We know what's gonna happen. But even more than that, we know who we have believed. And that's Jesus Christ in God's word. Philippians chapter one, verse 19 through 20. Paul says, for I know that this will turn out for my deliverance through your prayers and the provision of the spirit of Jesus Christ, according to my earnest expectation and hope that I will not be put to shame in anything, but that with all boldness, Christ will even now, as always, be exalted in my body, whether by life or by death. How did he start that out? He says, for I know that this will turn out for my deliverance. And then he ended up by saying, whether by life or death, God will keep his promise. You remember Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? What a story. One of these days, I'm just going to preach on those three. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They looked at the king. They had the fiery furnace over here. It had been heated up seven times, and it was just roaring. They had this evil king standing before them and said, Guys, all you got to do is just bow down and worship me. I'll let you live. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego says, King, we don't really need to answer you in this because they're not even a discussion here to be had, we will not bow to you, and our God will deliver us. You hear that? Our God will deliver us, and whether it be through the fire or in the fire, we will be delivered from your hand, and we will not bow and worship you. And that's what Paul's saying. Paul's saying, I know that this will turn out for my deliverance, either by life or by death. If I stay in this world, these things that I'm suffering, God's going to work through them. God's going to take care of all of it. And even if I die because of some of these circumstances or situations, all that is for me is it's gain. I go to heaven. I be with my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For me to live is Christ. To die is gain. Paul said, I know that my Lord will honor his salvation. So his, his promises, so no matter what happens to us, no matter what we face, we have the peace of God abiding in us by the presence of the Holy Spirit through the Lord Jesus Christ. We have the assurance, we have the know-so that God will keep his promise and that will be our firm foundation. But here's the deal. Like Batman and like Paul, we must be prepared. Number one, we must know that Christ is in us. We must know that Jesus Christ is indwelling us. In other words, we must know that we are saved. Are, are you born again? Have you submitted your life to Jesus Christ? Have you repented and said, Lord Jesus, I'm turning from the, the world and from the things of the world, and now I'm going to live for you and I'm going to serve you? If you have, then the Lord is indwelling you, and you have the presence of the Holy Spirit, and you have this promise. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5, Jesus said, well, the writer of the book of Hebrews says, for he himself, Jesus, has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Do you know that? Do you have that promise? And so even when you get in times where it seems like there is no hope, it seems like that all is lost and there is nothing in this world humanly that can be done to save you, do you know that the Lord Jesus Christ is still right there with you. 
Can you stand like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and say, hey, we don't even need to discuss this. Can you be like Paul and say, whether in life or death, I know that this will work for my deliverance. Folks, that's what salvation does. That's what that peace of God does in our hearts and in our lives. Moses knew this kind of relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen to what Hebrews chapter 11 says about Moses, beginning in verse 24. He says, by faith, Moses, when he had grown up, he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to endure ill treatment with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin. Considering the approach of Christ to greater riches than the treasures of Egypt, for he was looking to the reward. Now listen to verse 27. By faith, he left Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is unseen. By faith, he endured by seeing him who is unseen. It doesn't say that Moses saw him physically. It says he saw him who is unseen. And at this point in in his life that, that is being referred to here in the book of Hebrews, the burning bush, he had not experienced the burning bush yet. But his relationship with God was such that to him it was real. He had that that practiced experience of God's presence, and it was real to him. He saw him that was unseen. And through the promises, through the indwelling presence of the Lord Jesus Christ, we do the same thing. We don't see Jesus physically. He's not standing right here physically and walking with me, but in truth, He's right here with me. In truth, not only is he indwelling me by the Holy Spirit, he's surrounding me by his grace, by his mercy, by his power. His word is in me like a a seed bearing fruit each and every day by the power and presence of the Holy Spirit. And as a result of that, the child of God is always prepared no matter what happens. Like Batman and Robin, we must, excuse me, like Batman and Paul, we must keep our weapons with us and ready at all times. Now, we've been given in Ephesians chapter 6 the whole armor of God. We need to put that armor on. You never saw Batman go out without his Batman gear on. The Apostle Paul never went anywhere without his weapons without what the Lord had given him. In Ephesians chapter 6, the armor of God, the weapon that we are given is the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Amen? The Word of God that never fails, the Word of God that gives us the promises that in Christ Jesus, all of the promises are yes. Amen. Never leave without that assurance and that promise. And then secondly, like in our text in Philippians chapter 4, what we read, the Apostle Paul says, this I say, rejoice in the Lord. And again, I say rejoice. So rejoice, praise, thanksgiving, worship the Lord Jesus Christ. And then he said, and in all things, pray. So really, the Word of God the sword of the Spirit, rejoicing. That's always in the presence of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Joy and rejoice, they they come from the same word. So that presence gives us that joy that we can rejoice in all things. And then prayer, knowing that I can call out in, in a moment's notice and God hears me and God is there, and God is answering my prayers, all of my prayers. God will 
honor his word, but we have to be prepared and we have to have our weapons with us and ready at all times. So what do you know this morning? What is your foundation of your life today? Is it a big bank account? Is it that you've got a big house and and maybe is it, maybe it's you're young and healthy and I've got my whole folks those foundations can be taken away in a moment but the true foundation of God the true foundation of God's forgiveness and God's salvation and then of God's promises to his children is a foundation that can never be taken from you, the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul said in Ephesians chapter five that we are sealed by the Holy Spirit until the day of redemption. Amen. Sealed by the Holy Spirit until the day of redemption. And you see, after the day of redemption, we won't need to be sealed by the Holy Spirit because then we'll be in heaven, we'll be in eternity with the Lord Jesus Christ and there'll be no more wickedness or evil. There'll be no more battles to fight. But for now, we are sealed with the Holy Spirit. And like Batman, I don't have any superhuman powers. I have very few abilities of my own. All that I have is a gift from the Lord Jesus Christ through his salvation, that he is watching over me, that he has sealed me, that he has given me his promises, and his peace pervades over me and over everything that happens to me. So when I get up Anytime, in the mornings, in the evening, whenever I see the news, I see what's happening, I get up and and just things just aren't going right. It could, you know, it could, you, we got problems sometimes in our houses, the car won't cry. I mean, you know, anything, it doesn't matter what, like Batman, but more so like the Apostle Paul, and even more so like my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I stand and I know who I am. I know what I have in Jesus Christ. And I know that my Lord and Savior will never leave me nor forsake me. Amen. Whew. Amen. God bless you and thank you for being with me today. Uh, no matter what happens in the world, and, and maybe next week we'll talk about the news or, or later, but no matter what happens, always remember that God is in control of all of this. And remember all of the Bible studies that we've done before, all of the prophetic studies of the Old Testament prophets in the New Testament, God told us that all of this was going to happen. So rather than, than us becoming afraid, rather than us, to, oh, I'm worried, I don't know what's going to happen, no, we already knew it was coming. We know it's going to be here and we know what's going to happen when it's all over. And that is the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm going to quit. I'm, I'm starting to ramble and, and I'll do that if you let me. If you don't turn off that camera, I'll ramble. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for being with me. I want to say hello to our new subscribers. Uh, thank you, those of you that have sent messages and, and of affirmation and, and questions. And, and I, I forget to mention that. Let me, let me remind you, if you have questions or comments, uh, just leave them below, either on YouTube or on Facebook. And, and, and I'll answer those questions. It may take me a little while. I may have to study and figure some things out. But anyway, your questions will get answered one way or the other. If you have prayer requests or whatever, send them to me. If you don't want to put them public on Facebook or whatever, uh, email me, don.chumley, C-H-U-M-L-E-Y, at gmail.com. And I'll pray with you, and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll be your friend. Amen. God bless you. Thank you.